For some reason today, the lecture today under the topic of uh, spiritual formation is on how to free our hearts from bitterness. We've talked about the big three that can block our hearts even after conversion and after consecration. There can still be troubling issues that keep us from experiencing God's best and experiencing the untroubled heart that we're after. Guilt in our relationship to God, bitterness in our relationship to other people, and anxiety in relationship to ourself. But bitterness is one of the most difficult sins to diagnose and the easiest sin to justify, and it's also one of the most contagious of sins. Dr. David Siemens has said, we cannot long ingest and integrate hidden resentment any more than our stomachs can digest and incorporate bits of broken glass. Bitterness saps our lives and our churches of vitality and spiritual strength. Dr. David Allen said, the way to another person's heart is through your own. If your heart is bound up with hurts and bitterness and regrets, you cannot reach out fully to others until those destructive emotional chains are broken. And by the grace of God, that's what we want to do. Break the destructive chains of bitterness. Be free from that. Free our hearts from bitterness. Bitterness eats away like acid. And it not only affects us and destroys us and our relationship with the Lord, but it contaminates other people. We have this warning in scripture. Hebrews 12, 15. See to it that no one misses the grace of God and, no, and that no bitter root springs up to cause trouble and defile many. Cause trouble for you and defiles many other people. That's what bitterness does. I've seen it happen again and again. And a bitter person becomes a prisoner of their own making. They become angry, they become discouraged, they become depressed, they become disillusioned with life, they're unable to concentrate on their responsibilities or to enjoy their relationship with God, with other people, because they're consumed with bitterness. A friend of mine has a great example of that. His wife of 30 years had betrayed him by having an affair with an old boyfriend for five years before he discovered it. He became extremely bitter angry first and then bitter. And as I tried to talk with him about bitterness and we corresponded back and forth, on one occasion he wrote to me, and this is part of the paragraph that he wrote. He said, I believe I have every right to be bitter and I want both revenge and justice. Justice to me would be for her lover to die or at least be castrated. I am left with being the butt of a cruel joke. Now that's a description of a bitter man whose own life and heart was being destroyed and it affected his children, his job, his relationships, and certainly his walk with the Lord. Bitterness gives all of life a sour taste. How does bitterness happen? Most people will never acknowledge they're bitter. They don't believe they're bitter. And I, I have never heard anyone say I'm a bitter person. I've heard people say, you know, I, I'm a worrier, I'm filled with anxiety, or I just have these guilt feelings. But I've never heard anyone say, I am dealing with bitterness. They can say I, I'm angry, I've been hurt, and all the rest. Because bitterness, as I said earlier, is a very hard sin to diagnose. Why? Because it's underground. Hebrews 12, 15 says, be careful that a root of bitterness doesn't spring up. Well, a root is underground. You don't see a root, do you? It's there and it's working away, it's growing, but it's out of sight. But then as you continue on that hurt trail and with the anger and feeding and all kinds of other stuff, you nourish 
that root and it blooms up into full-blown bitterness. But it begins as a root, a tiny root that's there planted deep in your heart that you don't even realize it's there. Here's the way that I understand that it develops. An offense occurs and life is full of offenses. Unkind, unjust, undeserved things happen to every one of us. You cannot live in this broken world and not be affected by something, by some kind of offense. And it can be an unintentional offense, but somebody offends you, they don't speak to you, they walk right by you, they say something maybe unintentional, but it offends you. And, and when you're offend, offended and you, you think about that offense for a little while, you begin to feel hurt. I have been hurt. And I ask people sometimes, has anyone ever hurt you? Oh, yes. Everybody's got someone that's hurt them. Again, living in, the, living in a broken world. In marriages, people hurt each other. Not intentionally, but it happens in marriages and sometimes it's very severe. It happens to children as they're growing up with their parents. I've been hurt by my parents, deeply hurt, deeply wounded, hurt by teachers, hurt by coaches, hurt by bosses when you get a job. Uh, it just happens. Hurt happens. The offense and then the hurt. And so when that happens, and it begins a little bit unseen, you've got that root there now, and that root is starting to take life and starting to spring up. And the next step usually is self-pity after you're hurt. Not necessarily anger right away, I'm just hurt. And I, I feel sorry for myself. Why did this happen to me? I was trying to do the right thing in my marriage. I was trying to be a good husband and a good wife, and they turned against me. I was doing my job, and then I got fired from my job, and that hurt. This coach, I was playing well, and then they put me on the bench and put somebody else in there, and, and that, that hurt. And you begin to rehearse the damage, and you begin to think about the situation, and what happened, and why it happened, and why they did it. And you begin to fill your heart with self-pity, and you're all the time nourishing that root and that root is growing, 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 growing. Stronger, getting a stronger grip on you actually because it's going down deeper into the soil of your heart. And then at some point, then you get angry. You get angry. Why did this happen to me? That person had no right to do this to me. And I was trying to do the best that I could, and here's what happened. So it goes from self-pity to anger. You begin to seethe with anger, begin to lash out towards the offender like my friend did, lashing out towards his wife and towards that person. And you justify that anger. It's been stuffed for a while, but now it bubbles up to the surface, and you get angry. And then that anger you not only give vent to it, you hang on to that anger and you justify the anger because of the unjust, undeserved, unkind thing that happened to you. And you don't process that anger. And all of this, the offense, the hurt, self-pity, that's, that's common to all of us. That's part of being human. And God gives us the grace to process that and deal with it, work through those emotions. But if you don't, and it comes to anger, and you hang on to that anger, then the next step that happens is bitterness. And bitterness permeates the life like poison. It, it permeates every aspect of your life. And it not only does that, but it oozes out on other people. And it begins to contaminate everything you're involved in, every relationship that you have, and you become a miserable, depressed person. It's poison. It's, but, but bitterness is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. And so you're the one that's dying. You're the one whose heart is being shut off from God. It's like Dr. David Allen said, the heart is like a sponge. 
It becomes filled with hurt. Soon there's no space left for love. Over the years, as we allow the heart, the hurt that fills our hearts to increase, we run out of room for anything else. We cannot see beauty or love, even if it hits us in the head. I've been around some very bitter people. One of my uncles became a very bitter man. He had gone through this hurt trail that we talked about, the anger, but it settled into bitterness and it got him in his grip. My grandmother had uh, four children and she appointed one of them to be the executor of her will and uh, kind of cut out the other kids from having any involvement at all in, in her affairs. When my grandmother died, this one uncle worked everything around in his name and he got the houses, the cars, the bank account, everything and cut out the other uncle and cut out my mother, the sister. And then he took off with all that money and they were offended. They were hurt. They had the self-pity. We're one of the children too. We deserve some of this inheritance. And then they became very angry. But in my mother and my uncle, the bitterness gripped them. That rut came to full through fruition. And you wouldn't want to be around them. And I was there sometimes when they were talking and they rehearsed this again and again between the two of them. And you just felt the poison spilling out in the room, spilling out on me. I had to leave the house because they were so bitter and, and so filled with poison that it was impossible to be around them. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com. What do you do when you find yourself bitter? How do you get rid of bitterness? What are your options? As I understand it from Scripture, you only have three options. Seek revenge. They hurt me. I'm going to hurt them. This lover went after my wife. I'm going to go after him. I wish he was dead. Revenge is one option. What does that do? That compounds the problem tremendously. It's not an answer. You still got the bitterness with you, even if you get revenge. The other one is just to stuff it down. I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. I'm hurt, but I'm not bitter. But that poison just keeps working in your system and it destroys you. We were never made to live our systems with bitterness in us because it is like a poison. It is like an acid that just eats away and keeps deteriorating the personality and the relationship with God. So the answer is not revenge, it compounds the problem. The answer is not to stuff and say, well, you know, that's who they are, the way they are, and uh, I just won't have anything to do with them, but it doesn't bother me. But all the while, it's doing its destructive work. There's only one solution to bitterness, only one, and that's forgiveness. 